Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. Bedford's cost segregation specializes in generating significant tax savings via their engineering-based studies for commercial real estate clients nationwide. Founded in 2002, Bedford is one of the largest independently owned cost segregation providers in the country with over 14,000 studies completed to date in multiple offices throughout. The most important decision ownership can make when incorporating cost segregation within their real estate portfolio is selecting the right provider. With only 43 certified cost segregation professionals nationwide, Bedford is proud to employ eight of them and takes the quality of their people as seriously as their studies. Every certified cost segregation professional has passed a rigorous test combining knowledge of technical engineering issues, legal tax issues, ethics standards, and requires a strict level of prior work experience to be eligible. Bottom line, not all cost segregation providers are created equal. So be sure to take the decision seriously from the beginning to protect yourself for years to come. Please contact Bedford's Business Development Director, Frank Judici, to learn more. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Bobby Sharma. Thanks for being on the show, Bobby. Thank you, Whitney. Pleasure to be here with you. Focused on savings and investing, Bobby Sharma's biggest asset was building a network of trusted partners after several false starts. Being a real estate and technology junkie, he believes that technology is a tool to enhance in, to enhance investment strategies. He is currently building a prop tech startup in Silicon Valley. Uh, Bobby, thank you again uh, for your time and just being willing to share your expertise with the listeners and myself. Give us a little more about you know, maybe your, your real estate investing career or what you're doing right now in real estate. And let's jump into some of your superpowers. You know, I know you are extremely talented at just networking and, and building that, that investor base and those things that I know most of the listeners or majority of them are going to be very interested in hearing uh, as well and how you've used technology to do that too. So but give us a little more about your, your real estate background and who you are. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Whitney. Uh, so yeah, uh, look, uh, you know, I started investing uh, at a very early stage, and it was, it was purely accidental. I was 24, living in Southern California, and um, I happened to run across a house for sale. I was renting, and um, I was bored. I walked into the house. Uh, there was a an agent. I asked her a few questions, and. Uh, and I asked her if, if I was if I could be qualified for the loan because at that time I was I was still an immigrant, so I didn't have my green card yet. I was on a what's called a labor uh, visa, um, and she said, "Yeah, as long as you got a W two, we can get you a loan." So that's where it started. I bought a house, three bedroom, two bath in Riverside, California, and then I. Put, I put an ad in the local paper, got two roommates, and they paid uh, for most of the mortgage. Not quite all of it, but most of it. Uh, but, but that's where my journey started. And then a few years, uh, well, about a decade later, I, I was in, uh, because I was in technology, I, ended, I always wanted to be in Silicon Valley. I had heard of this mythical place called Silicon Valley. Um, so I ended up in the Bay Area and worked for a couple of really wonderful technology companies. But I always had the itch to get back into real estate. And um, so in 2010, when the downturn came, um, I jumped uh, and, and I, you know, the prices were 40% off, 50% off, uh, off the peak. So um, luckily um, connected with another real, great real estate agent and, you know, bought some properties and then bought some properties at the auction, uh, the courthouse uh, steps. Um, you know, uh, gambled a little bit there. But one of the things, you know, Whitney, that I realized was uh, the location where I was living, there was not a lot of uh, real estate meetings. So I had to go to San Francisco or San Jose for um, networking with other real estate uh, people. But I realized that I needed to surround myself with people that were much smarter than me, much more involved than me. And um, so, so, I would drive an hour and a half sometimes in the, with the traffic to go to these meetups. 
but and then I said, you know what, uh, there, you know, there's no meetups in my area. So in November 2010, I launched a small little meetup in Oakland, California, and and three people showed up. <laughs> so, um, but as we mentioned, uh, you know, in my introduction, I grew that from three people. Uh, now we have about 5,000 members. Uh, we meet uh, very frequently, uh, at least once a month, and now we're meeting uh, online. Um, but what I was able to do was use technology. So I adopted uh, things like MailChimp or Constant Contact, like very early, like uh, in 2010, I was already building my list. But, but you know, you had asked me about what's my superpower. My, you know, um, it's really just networking with people, just being kind to people, just listening to them. Um, that's where, you know, um, in fact, um, there was a gentleman that I met at my meetup eight years ago. Uh, we, ha we had a, a beer before the meetup. Um, and to this day, I'm doing deals with him. Um, we're on, a, on our about 50th or 60th deal. So it, but it started from sharing that, you know, having that beer together um, uh, before the event. So nice. Uh, well, yeah, I, I think it's incredible. I mean, in any business, but uh, especially in real estate, your network is so important, right? And, and it's neat that, you know, you're just really were able to focus on that. And, and, you know, you mentioned like being kind and listening, you know, it was like one of the first things that you said about that. And I think it's so important in any relationship, right? Whether it's, you know, in your home or whether it's, you know, at, at uh, the meetup group, you know, the, the ones that listen to others uh, quickly become the, like the favorite people, right? You know, you, you know, you really like that person. After you get home, you think, I really like that guy. But then you think, well, what did I, what do I know about him? Well, not much because he was asking me all the questions, right? Exactly. So uh, that's, that's so neat that, that you did that. Can you elaborate on, um, uh, you know, just the, the, how technology also helped you to do that and how yeah. technology has helped you to grow your business. You're obviously an expert in that, in that field. So I'd love, I know, I know a lot of the listeners are thinking, you know, everybody's thinking, how do I scale my business? How do I use technology? Uh, can you just shed some light on how you've done that? Yeah. So, um, once again, about, uh, in the, 2016, uh, I helped, there was a company, uh, they had about 100 doors when I met them, uh, but they were focused on Kansas City, St. Louis market, um, and they were, uh, they were focused mostly on Section 8 properties. But anyway, long story short, we became friends. The, the, he was a presenter at my meetup. I became their, one of their first investors. But what we did to scale up our business was, number one, we implemented a CRM, right? And secondly, uh, their website was just horrible. It had no proper messaging. It was just like a, uh, like a Word doc on HTML, right? It was, uh, you, know, so, you know, somebody's nephew had designed that website for free and all that. So, so we, we upgraded uh, the website. We, we put uh, the proper kind of messaging about who are, residents are in our section eight properties how do we take care of our investors uh who, who what is the team like why should they trust the team uh and of course testimonials so a lot of good uh, testimonial testimonials from from residents from investors and it cost us quite a bit right so it was not an uh, an inexpensive uh, venture but it cost us, you know, a um, significant amount of money. It was an investment that we made. But the most important investment was in a good CRM. And um, built, we, so I helped uh, implement the CRM, helped build out the, the database, figure out who are the accredited investors versus non-accredited investors, figure out who uh, was more uh, ready to invest. So we, we did a couple of surveys. We, co we started collecting data and we, we figured out, you know, who likes the passive income versus who likes to be more aggressive and take on an equity position. So once we had all those things figured out, we would reach out to them um, uh, on a regular basis, give them updates, not solicit it, not solicit any investing, just give them updates on, look, hey, we, we acquired certain properties. Here's what we're doing. And if they were curious, because they knew we worked with investors, they would reach out to us. 
So there was never a hard sell, but we used technology for all that messaging. Long story short, um, we're now at over 650 doors um, and the operations, you know, growing. Uh, it's, in, it's mainly in the Midwest, in Kansas City, St. Louis, Cincinnati markets, Memphis as well. But, but that's how we grew, uh, grew that business. Nice. Can you, do you mind to mention what CRM you all are using? Uh, we used Salesforce. Okay. Yeah, that's a very robust uh, system, no doubt about it. You know, it, on that uh, aspect alone, what about just the learning curve of using a system like that? You know, that, you know, we use a pretty robust system as well. I looked at Salesforce, um, but, uh, but it's, you know, there's a big learning curve for our whole team, right? So it's taken months before we could really start using it well. And, and I feel like we've still barely skimmed the surface of what this thing can do. Um, you know, how is that for you all implementing something like that and getting the whole team on board and really using everything it can do? Yeah. So luckily, you know, I, so I had some experience with Salesforce. Uh, so I was basically the admin for all of that. And, um, but then we did, uh, you know, our, our, most of the partners are based here in the West Coast, but we do have our, our office, the main hub of our business is in Kansas City. So luckily, one of the people in, on that team in Kansas City was able to pick it up pretty easily. And she was in finance. And, and she kind of ran with it. We did hire a marketing assistant uh, to help out, out with some of the collateral. But, uh, you know, you know if, I, if I was to do it over again, and Whitney, if I was in your shoes, um, I would start with a much simpler uh, CRM system. You don't have to start with Salesforce. It just happened that I knew something about Salesforce. Uh, uh, because I'd used it in my corporate job. Um, so, but not everybody has that luxury. Or, so I would say start with a really simple CRM that you can pick up uh, in a few days. Uh, you know, there's, there's HubSpot, there's so many other CRMs out there that are really easy to use. Um, but that's where I would start. But, but adopt some technology into your business, uh, you know, regardless of how, but, but, you know, go beyond Excel or Google uh, spreadsheets, right. you know, go beyond that. There's some free ones, right. That are, yeah. that are pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it, it better than just having an Excel sheet, no doubt about yeah. it. Um, yeah. You know, so could you just highlight a little bit your, uh, you know, real estate investing and syndications, things like that. And, and to the point, you know, you're retiring from your, from a well-paying W2, you know, position right. and, and, you know, just the thought process behind that transition. Yeah. So, yeah. So again, most of my, uh, contacts happen because I network a lot. Not only do I have my own meetups, but I go to other people's meetups because that's where like-minded people go. So, um, you know, I, I take the time and I go and I support other meetups. And sometimes I even do joint events with other meetup leaders. Uh, so, uh, you know, sometimes we have a speaker who can only be in town for one night uh, and we want to fill the room, so we'll do we'll, we'll do co-marketing. Um, so uh, essentially, I found my syndication partners uh, because I had invited some of them. You know, folks like yourself. Uh, I had I had a lot of respect for what they had achieved. Uh, so I said, hey, would you like to come and present at my meetup? So four and a half years ago, I had a a, a young gentleman uh, who had acquired a lot of doors. And he spoke at my meetup. And, uh, and then uh, two years ago, he reached out to me and said, uh, look, I enjoyed presenting to your group. Uh, we're looking at acquiring some more um, assets. You know, would you like to partner uh, with us? And so, so that's, that's how it got started. But, it, you know, Whitney, it always started for me uh, by uh, offering something of value to my partners, right? It, it, it was always... Hey, listen. Uh, I don't you give me equity just because I'm wealthy or I'm a nice guy or whatever. No, it's how can I help you grow your business? Uh, how you know what are the challenges that you're facing that I may be able to help you with? Uh, maybe I can't, but if I can, I will try to help you. Uh, so that's been my approach, and that's how all my partnerships started. Um, so so that's how we got going with syndications. 
No, that's awesome. Uh, you know, are there examples maybe, or just thoughts that you have about adding value that you can help the listener with? Because we hear this often, but it's it's still not something that that most take advantage of, right? And you still, it's hard to change that mindset, right, of just adding value before you're asking for something. Um, you know, how did you do that? Or maybe you have some examples that could help somebody that's listening to to really have that in mind. I mean, for real, you know, as yeah. opposed to just knowing that's what we say. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you uh, one, one uh, incident. Um, so I, I was an LP on a mobile home park syndication and it was, they were, they weren't big operators. Uh, they were sort of medium sized operators, but they luckily one of the partners was based out in San Francisco. So one day, uh, you know, we, we, we grabbed lunch, you know, because I had invested with them and he's like, Hey, I'll give you an update. Let's go grab lunch. And during the lunch, he, he expressed that he was having challenges with his asset manager. He was not able to find uh, a, a reliable asset manager. So I'm like, I'm like, what's involved, you know? And he, he explained what's involved. I'm like, uh, if you don't mind, I'll be your asset manager for some of your properties. I'll volunteer. I don't, I don't want you to pay me. No, no payment involved. Just coach me a little bit. Tell me what I need to do. Uh, and, you know, big, I had been in corporate environment. I knew how to do, you know, I knew how to communicate. I knew, I knew how to use Slack and Asana and all these things. And I knew how to do project management. Uh, and, and that's what they needed, right? They needed a project manager. And uh, um, so he's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, look, I got time and you don't need to pay me. Okay. He's like, when can you start? I'm like, tomorrow, you know? So, so, so that lunch went from, uh, you know, just talking about the business to now me becoming an asset manager for four of their properties. And we, we got it stabilized. I was managing the property managers and there were fires to be put out. You know, there were incidents of uh, somebody brought in a pit bull, you know? So we had to file police reports and evict the lady. She was a very nice lady, but She's not allowed to have a pit bull in a park. And, and then there were, you know, other very interesting, by the way, mobile home parks, there's some interesting stories. So if you want to have a whole podcast on uh, the lifestyles of the mobile home park, I can, I can dive into that. But, uh, but yeah, we had, uh, so, so uh, about seven months later, they found a, a full-time asset manager, a former Marine you know, very good, very, um, um, you know, organized, um, and he's full-time with them now. But, but that's how I gave to, to that, uh, to that um, syndication. You know, no, no money, no, you know, didn't get paid, but I, I learned a valuable lesson. So, so volunteer, give, help. Um, you know, there, there might be a meetup leader in your community who needs help with something. Um, Talk to them. Go, go help them out. You know, most of the time, these are people, individuals who are taking time out of their lives to uh, organize events, to bring speakers, to make sure that the venue is available. Sometimes they're paying for the venue out of their pocket. I was doing that for a long time. Um, you know, so, so, so do things like that. Bobby, what's been the hardest part of this real estate journey or, you know, in commercial real estate for you? You know, partners, uh, you know, there was uh, opportunities for us to do really well, but when uh, partnerships don't align, uh, you got to, you know, uh, you know, it's called uh, fail fast. Uh, so once I realized in, in a couple of incidents where things weren't going right, I had to pull the eject button really quickly. I, I lost some money, uh, but it, it comes down to evaluate your partners and make sure they have the, the same ethical and discipline uh, standard as yourself uh, and, and see if they're even better than you, right? Find partners that are, uh, that are going to make you better, right? So in my case, um, there were two incidents where we, we, we could have made a ton of money uh, back in the day, but just, you know, we hired the wrong people. We uh, made the wrong decision. So, uh, but, but after, a short period, you know, I'm like, this is not working. Let's just close down the company. That's been the hardest part. It's, it's a lot though to recognize that and then to just 
well, make it quick, right? Rip the Band-Aid off fast, right? Uh, yeah, and get that over with. But, but it, you know, a lot of people, it's easy to just dwell on that, right? And get stuck in that uh, and, and then not move forward. So congratulations on that, though. Just moving past that, most of us have had some kind of problem partner or, you know, in some way, and, and it's hard to get past sometime, sometimes. Uh, you know, Bobby, how do you prepare for a, a downturn? You're thinking about, you know, large commercial uh, multifamily or real estate, you know, how do you prepare for a downturn? Yeah. So yeah, the, the, the pandemic really, we, we bought our assets, you know, before the pandemic. So yeah, this is a, a surprise for us as well. So the only thing we're doing is we're uh, really uh, tightening our property management and our expenses and, uh, we did do the distributions, so so all of our uh, the the three indica- syndications that I'm involved in, uh, we did do the distributions, but we let the investors know that um, look, uh, you know, we we are collecting, we, we, you know, we, we, it's not quite at this level at, as we thought, but we are collecting, so you deserve to get paid. But if things go severely uh, downhill from here you know, we may have to come back to you for a capital raise or uh, plan B is that the, the GPs will add funds to the, to, to the syndication themselves if, you're, if the investors are not willing to do, to do that. But so, so those, those are our plans. Um, but, you know, uh, you know we, we're, we're just like any other syndicator, uh, we get anxious around, you know, the the first to the 10th are very uh, anxious uh, days, but luckily uh, the rents have been coming in, not quite where we want them to be, but they're coming in enough to do debt service. Uh, uh, if it, it's any worse, uh, we still have some wiggle room. We have enough margin in our deals, uh, yeah. but it, if it gets really, really bad, uh, then you know, we may have to go to the bank and figure something out. What do you predict uh, to happen, and say, in the next six to 12 months? Do you all have any thoughts on, hey, you know, we're buyers or we're going to wait a few months or we're, you know, we expect to see this happen? You know, the, the biggest unknown for me is the election outcome. Like, I hope people uh, stay calm. And uh, I think that that's the biggest event that's in, on everybody's uh, radar if it's going to cause a uh, turmoil or, or not. Right. So uh, regardless of who wins, I don't, it doesn't matter, but um, we do, the country needs to stay calm and get back to work. Right. So um, for a majority of my investments, uh, we're not acquiring, we, we're researching, we're looking at OMs and talking to brokers as you know, Whitney, there's no discount on a multifamily yet, right? There's the cap rates are still low. People are still you know, pricing these properties as though it's pre-COVID. Um, but uh, we're 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 on the sidelines looking and seeing if there's any um, opportunities to pick up some deals. Uh, you know, shoring up some dry powder. Um, but uh, the election by far is the biggest event. Uh, you know, that, that, is, that is known. There could be other black swan events, but th- that are known, but, uh, sure. but that's what I, yeah. What's a way you've recently improved your business that we can apply to our business? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, I had, I, I left my W2 about two years ago and I had a project that I really wanted to focus on. It was my, uh, so I track all my investments, my real estate investments I used to in Excel. Right. So I had my my investments and, you know, what, what's my my interest payments? I, I'm a private money lender. I've got rentals. I've got syndications. I've got all these things. So f- for the past year and a half, I, I met up uh, with another gentleman who's got a h- solid technology background as well. So we've been using this tool that we've built to track our assets. It's a, it's an uh, asset performance management tool. It's not a property management tool. It's, it's not a quick books, but it's kind of a hybrid where we pull in data from uh, your property management, from your bank account, and we give you how your assets are performing that you've already purchased, but not necessarily uh, just your syndications, right? You could own 
uh, your rent, your rental properties. You could have um, a private money. You could be in a note. You could be in a syndication. It's your, uh, your primary home. You have all these different asset classes that you could be invested in. Where are you tracking them? We, we have document storage. We have reminders. We have a, a graph that you can look at. So that's what I'm using to, um, you, know, you know, so the analogy would be if you log into E-Trade or Schwab or, or Robinhood, you can see your portfolio in a glance and you right. can see how much you're up and down. Well, we wanted to build that for real estate. So that's what we have built. Nice. Yeah. So tell me the number one thing that's contributed to your success. The number one thing has been um, just networking and, and, and connecting with, with the right people. And, and like, like we discussed, not everybody's going to be a right fit, but if you do get the right fit, you get, do get the right people, it's your team and you write along with the team. So for me, it's been just uh, persistence and, and surrounding myself with the right team. How do you like to give back? You know, so there's, there's multiple ways, right? So the, the way I like to give back is by creating jobs. Um, so when I was doing fix and flips and I'd go to my job site and I'd see people working, right. And I'm like, you know, uh, so, so I'm providing a livelihood for somebody. So for me, it's always been, how can I give jobs to people? Right. To me, that's number one. Um, the other way is through, because of the, the, the section eight, uh, company that I'm, I'm involved in and I'm a partner in you know, we provide, you know, good, clean, affordable housing. We improve the neighborhoods because we buy so much in a, in a, in a, in a block of, uh, let's say Kansas city, the inner city, we, we eventually help improve uh, the, those blocks, right? So now there's no graffiti, uh, there's better homes there, uh, you know, families are, the kids are playing outside. So we have seen dramatic, you know, changes in those communities. Um, and so that's how, and, and, you know, through my net, uh, my meetup network, providing education. So those, I would say are the three ways in which I've given back to the community. Nice. Well, Bobby, I'm grateful to have met you and grateful to have had you on the show. Uh, just an amazing story, you know, the immigrant, you know, coming to the U S and house hacking. I mean, it's great to hear that. And just, you know, you rented it out to other people and got started in that way. Didn't know if you would even qualify and you made it happen. And now you're uh, doing a lot bigger things and, and how you've used technology as well to even grow, uh, you know, your meetup to 5,000 people. That's very significant. Uh, most people that are running a meetup, you know, I dream of having one that size, or maybe they think, Oh, there's no way I could manage that, you know, but you've done it. And I'm sure that has paid, you know, dividends forward. Uh, so, but tell people how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Yeah, very easy. Uh, so my name, my, it's just uh, B-O-B-B-Y. So Bobby at bettercapital.us. So uh, Bobby at bettercapital.us. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.